All right, so we got the biggest game releases of October of 2024. Let's get to it. Let's get to the video. It will be a busy month Hello, for everybody. the channel. October is finally What's up, Max? It's the time of year when the most video games come out, and a lot of the yep. time they're spooky, evil, or otherwise accursed in honor of Halloween. But this month in particular, there really are a hell of a lot of them, somewhat literally. You'll yeah. see what I mean in a second. Now, here are October 2024. This, this is this is the biggest, biggest game month. releases from hell. Oh. Now, before we get started, just our usual friendly reminder that we do our very best to make these videos as accurate and comprehensive as possible. Okay. But games do slip through the cracks here and there, and release dates are subject to change after the fact. True. The fact being us making This is these the videos. biggest so month of gaming of this year. Screwed anything up. Besides, like, December it. of the game October Awards, 1st, of the questionably titled Master Detective Archives Rain Code Plus lets you play as an amnesiac sleuth in training, solving I'm the hell some of some mysteries with too. the help of your old pal, the God of Death. Doesn't really sound like a master detective to me, but this is the enhanced multi-platform re-release of a 2023 Switch game, so maybe he's learned or remembered a few tricks of the trade since then. That's on PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. On the third, if you thought your workplace Listen, I know was until bad, Don comes out on the fourth, I know. Precision platforming your way through the cursed cubicles of a particular Stygian place of business and probably getting chewed out by a stapler-headed boss for not doing your TPS reports properly. That's leaving early access on PC. If you'd prefer a more conventional hell, well, stay a while and listen. On October 8th, Diablo... F he missed God of War. Um, remastered, remake, coming out on October, on, uh, October 4th. So just in case he missed anything, don't worry. Your boy knows. Four's big old expansion is here to get you back in the grind you. running through the jungles of nahantu and learning the ropes of the all-new spirit born class that's on everything that diablo 4 is you, already man. on if you'd prefer some hellish hills to hillish yep. hells well keep it down because silent yep. hill, Silent 2 hill is go. here to have you running from pyramid headed monsters and pressing some triangle faced buttons on ps5 and pc there's no triangle button on pc but there's an a and a v and various pointy little carrot keys so just work True. with me here come on if you prefer Mr. Satan to regular Satans and bright colors yelling in explosions to fog and eerie silence, Dragon yes, Ball Spark and Zero is just what the doctor ordered. Yes, Unless you're sir. talking about Dr. Zero, in which case the doctor's orders are for androids to kill Goku. If you yeah. haven't been keeping track, this is basically the fourth entry in the Budokai Tenkaichi series. The last one came out 17 years ago, and in that time <sighs> we got a literal dozen universes worth of new Dragon Ball characters to pit against each other. So as a result, this game has one of the biggest launch rosters in fighting game history. Yeah. 164 different playable characters out the gate that is almost double that of super smash brothers ultimate and i have a sneaking suspicion that sparking zero will get more as dlc i'm guessing it's not a coincidence this drops the same day as the new anime series dragon ball daima premieres in any case sparking zero is coming to new gen and pc on october 11th or october 8th if you pay for the fancy version or if you're a strange son from the future y'all we're covering everything we're covering everything Going every game we're covering it all. the month that same day sees the release of metaphor everything. re fantasia which is the new RPG from the folks behind the Persona series and the more recent Shin Megami Tensei games. Even better, it's got mechanical designs courtesy of Ikuto Yamashita, who worked on Evangelion, and a bunch of its monsters are based on the work of Hieronymus Bosch, whose work was basically the 15th century equivalent of Evangelion. You know, Judeo-Christian apocalyptic visions of f***ed up angels and demons fighting each other. Stuff like that. Narratively, Metaphor Re Fantasio seems to be leaning more towards conventional fantasy than some of Atlas's other series, but it sure as hell doesn't look conventional. That's on PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. If being stuck at a social gathering with Dora the Explorer, Nick Jr. Party Patrol, Adventure, Steve's Dog Blue is your idea of a fate worse than death, well, a fresh hell awaits you in Nick Jr. Party Adventure. <laughs> hey, fun fact: one of the reasons I let my hair grow out is that my wife kept saying I looked like the dude from Paw Patrol, and really, fair. That's on everything. <laughs> if you've gotten your fill of diving into hell with one of the year's Starship biggest, Troopers. most bug-filled games and want to spread a different, I remember more officially the, licensed I flavor of galactic trailer. democracy, October wow. 11th is also when Starship Troopers Extermination leaves early access on PC and deploys on PS5 and Xbox Series. In addition to chaotic 16-player co-op survival missions against hordes of bugs, single-player missions are also on the way, which will involve plenty of Casper Van Dien shouting at you as General Johnny Rico. And actually, the multiplayer might too, because he told me at Gamescom that he's been playing during early access and yelling at kids over his mic. Oh, wow. Some bugs. You know what to do. Oh, oh no, he's too loud in that suit. Yourself, Every time I look into a monitor, my circuit sizzle. When are we going to start busting deceptive shops? Well, you should seek professional help, but also on October 11th, there's Transformers <laughs> Galactic <laughs> Trials, which promises equal parts arcade racing. I re I, did I react to this trailer? I think I reacted to this trailer too. Bust some deceptive shops in there uh, I'm not really That's interested in this game. We were going so strong with this Halloween theme, but the best connection I could make to Transformers was helicopters. Helicopter! Helicopter! <laughs> 
and I don't think they have any in galactic trials. What a drag. <laughs> Anyway, if you'd rather float like a butterfly, uh -oh, undisputed. Roll out like a bumblebee, last but not least on the 11th, man, a lot of games are coming out on the 11th, man. Indisputably the biggest boxing game to come out this month, probably this year, but it's not like we get a ton of those these days anyway. It's True. been on Steam Early Access since the beginning of last year, and it's got mostly positive reviews. If you wish EA's Fight Night series hadn't gone into early retirement in 2011, this might be worth going a few rounds with. That's on new gen and PC. Hey, I just met you and this is crazy, but if you've ever wished that Carly Rae Jepsen's breakout hit Call Me Maybe could be stuck on your head instead of just in your head, great news because it's one of the 25 songs included with Just Dance VR, which hits the meta quest on October 15th. As much of a bop that song is, I think I'll listen to it the old fashioned way, which is at weddings when the DJ is trying to get people out on the floor but isn't quite ready to resort to uptown funk quite yet. If you want to experience your max, a whole max, new world max. of shining, shimmering we gotta splendor, talk, we gotta talk after the, after the video of this one. Yo, Max, what are you talking about? But October 15th, <laughs> max, what are you? Eternum is hitting PC and new gen consoles. Oh, man, this we all love Max, don't we? Game, but also a ton of new content and will offer I don't know what Max is talking about, but okay. The gameplay to console newcomers, we love them. Also bringing some improvements to the PC version as well. On the 17th, Blazing Strike is a retro-style 2D fighter that draws inspiration from classic SNK and Capcom arcade games, but incorporates some modern sensibilities as well, such as not making you go ask your mom for a bunch of quarters. That's True. on the PlayStation's PC and Switch. Still on the 17th, if you want a tense, nerve-wracking oh, game man, try this to avoid game. making any noise, A Quiet Place, The Road Ahead is exactly that. It's a first-person single-player narrative survival oh, horror based Lord, on the hit game. movie franchise, and it's on new gen and PC. Man, this if game is crazy. If you want a tense, nerve-wracking game where you will inevitably make a oh, lot of noise, man. Super Mario Party Jamboree is exactly Super that. Super Mario Party! It's a third-person multiplayer party game that will probably result in countless arguments between friends and family members that is exclusively on Switch, at least until Mom says it's explicitly off-limits because somebody always winds up crying why can't True. you just be nice to your sister already on the 18th uh, she don't, Nine, she don't is a third person action adventure game involving paranormal abilities that lets you possess enemies and make them think you're invisible and cool stuff like that if you'd like to know more about what the heck is going on in this universe there is plenty of supplemental media including a comic series oh a yeah i did check out this game and a whole trilogy of novels hey i react to this trailer stations xboxes and pc the game, I mean. Some of the other stuff is probably on there, too, but I'm unsure if it's even possible, let alone a good idea, to read several long books on your TV. Don't do that. Another game out that day that has several decades oh, of supplemental snap. media is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants Unleashed, which is the first game based on their latest permutation from Mutant Mayhem. That's on everything. Does the idea of a co-op action game with hack and slash combat, roguelite inspired missions, and town building progression make you light up with excitement? Well, if so, check out linked yeah. Banner of the Spark when it hits. It's not really. It's not like second. really my games. I'm if being, you prefer slashers yeah, to hack and slash, another game that might be more your speed is Forest Hills: The Last Year, which also hits PC that day as well. That is That's a, a big spider. That's a daddy long leg. Game that looks like it has a dash of Dead by Daylight and a pinch of Silent Hill. That has no connection to the indie horror film The Forest Hills, which is notably Shelley Duvall's final performance, but that hits streaming on the 4th. That's, that's a movie, not a game. We don't talk about movies here usually. Just throwing that in there because it has the same name as the game. Anyway, on the 24th, Romancing Saga 2 Revenge of the Seven is a full-on 3D overhaul of the groundbreaking 1993 Super Famicom JRPG. The original has stayed in circulation thanks to its success on Japanese mobile phones and subsequent ports to various platforms, but it seems like this latest overhaul could attract a whole new generation of fans who maybe prefer polygons to pixels. That's on the PlayStation, Switch, and PC. <laughs> hey, did you know that in France, the Smurfs are called Les Strumpfs, and in Germany, they're called Die Schlumpf, and in Italy, they're just called Poofy? Well, if you already knew that, did you know that the Smurfs Dreams is a 3D platformer about those Yo, Max, yo, Max, we're talking after this video. I can't lie to you. As well? Yo, Max, oh, well, answer my phone. Too, I guess we should we're just talking after this. Huh? <laughs> we're talking on after the this video. Call of Duty Black Ops 6, it's everything but Switch. <sighs> Title for this one, keep screwing. I'm going to keep it honest with you. <sighs> I'm really excited for this Call of Duty, man. For the first time in for Okay, I'm joking, but listen. This Call of Duty, man, I played the beta. I was feeling, the, you know, the, the the multiplayer. I really liked it. The zombies were... The zombies still had, like, some Warzone elements, but I liked it. And the campaign actually seems pretty compelling. So, if I'm being honest with you, I'm pretty excited about the game. I mean, because for over a year, we've been hearing leaks and rumors that suggest that it might be called Black Ops Gulf War. It's set during the Gulf War, so that makes sense. But it also seems like a continuation of the naming convention that started with Black Ops Cold War, which I guess is now officially considered Black Ops 5. You know what I mm -hmm. think? I think Activision got so embarrassed that everyone made fun of them for using the wrong Roman numeral for Black Ops 4 that they called the fifth game Cold War to distract everyone, and now for Black Ops 6, they switched to Arabic numerals, which they probably should have just done starting with 4 because Roman numerals are a pain in the ass after a certain point anyway. True. 
and Max is happening. Bro, this man Max is hopping into his conspiracy bag. I like it. Speaking of which, East 10 looks like an algebra problem, but it's actually the latest installment in the long running Ooh, yeah, that do look like an algebra problem. Anyway, East 10 is officially Ooh, like something I've seen in uh, second grade calculus. Suggest, it's got some Viking themes, which include some naval battles. And on the gameplay front, it's shaking things up with a more focused combat system where you only control two combatants rather than a whole party. Despite having an X in the title, that is on everything but Xbox. Something oh wow! Else in the title coming out that day is Sonic uh -oh, X Shadow Sonic and Shadow which is simultaneously a remaster of Sonic's 2011 solo outing and also an all-new adventure Ooh, starring looks the dark crazy. and edgier, but equally I need to see more gameplay of, of this game. Pronto. I'm you not joking. The X in the middle of a title like this, and I'm told that in this case it is Sonic X Shadow, which is maybe not ideal because it kind of sounds like you're saying Sonic's X Shadow, like they used to date, which they probably have in some fan fiction somewhere. The True. alternative would have been to make the X silent, True. like in the last Godzilla Kong movie or in Hunter. Hunter. Hunter, or it could have been cross like Street Fighter cross Tekken or by as in two by four or four by four. Yo, Max, case, Max, Sonic Max, 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 Max. What are we talking about, Max? Xbox Series, which is not Xbox Series X. We love X, Max. We love X, him. But a blanket term for Xbox Series X and S because repeatedly saying both of those letters is just excessive. On the 29th, there's the fourth mainline Life is Strange oh, game, Double Exposure. Snap, this is coming out as life in October, be, too? I applaud the developers for spelling the game title with normal words and not getting crazy and calling it, like, Double X Posure. This sees the return of the original Life is Strange protagonist, Max Caulfield, who once again is solving problems with supernatural abilities, but this time around, she's dealing with parallel overlapping timelines, not unlike the photographic technique from which the game is taking its name. That is on new gen and PC. Hey, if you thought we were out of hellish games this uh -oh. month, or you thought there was no more room in your Steam library uh -oh. for another game about shooting zombies, you are sorely mistaken on both counts. Uh -oh. Getting early access on Halloween proper is no more room in hell too. The long-awaited follow-up to the massively popular no more 2011 room in Bell. Zombie Survival FPS Source mod, which is now running in Unreal 5 and has been developed by the original team and Torn Banner Studios, the developers of the Chivalry series. If the idea of there being no more room in hell sounds more like a logistical and administrative nightmare rather than a badass quote from a brother, what are they doing? Movie, you may be better suited for Underworld Overseer. This VR Dungeon Keeper game will have you building uh, and running a subterranean lair, bossing around imps and demons to do your bidding and keeping your cool. I'm good on that one. I'm good. Loose. I'm That's good. On MetaQuest and PC VR on Halloween, the one day of the year where people put even dumber looking stuff on their heads than VR headsets. <laughs> and finally, True. if your idea of hell is waiting a decade, man, for the this game, bro, game, you're probably in heaven this month because man, this game, bro, I'm so listen, I'm such a new booty to this game right here, bro. This game is fire. I checked out some gameplay literally the other day. Um, obviously, it's on YouTube now. You guys can go check out my video whenever I checked out. I think I checked out 25 minutes of this uh, of this game right here. Bro, I'm such a newbie whenever it comes to uh, Dragon Age, bro. This game is absolutely fire, bro. Genuinely. Like, I, I, I was so, like, I was so, like, far away from this game. And not on purpose or nothing. It's just, like, bro, like, sometimes, like, you're just not in tune with, like, some games. Like, you're in tune with some games, but then, like, you know... You may not know that, that that this game exists, and then as soon as you, uh, you, you know, as soon as you step into that world, and all of a sudden, like, you know, you're kind of like sucked in. So, like, um, yeah, I, I'm definitely interested in this game right here. The Veilguard, formerly Dreadwolf, is finally coming to new gen and PC. From the sound of things, this project went through several circles of development hell. Allegedly, the earliest version was scrapped for not having a live service component, and a new one was in the works that would have remedied that, but then that went back to the drawing board after the massively multiplayer anthem f***ed the bed, and the singularly single-player Jedi Fallen Order exceeded expectations. So Bioware went back to square one again to make a single-player Dragon Age game, which you'd think would have been a... I think more people should... I'm sorry for pausing. You guys know I don't really pause like that. But I think more gaming companies should do that. I understand that there's a lot of success in like in in the live service area. I understand that. I do understand that. I understand that you know some gaming companies need to make money. They need to you know hit a certain uh you know money threshold or whatever. I understand, and I'm not saying that that they that they are doing it. I'm just saying just in general, a lot of games force this live service thing, and it ruins the vibe. And it kind of like it kind of like tricks the it kind of tricks the customers, you know, because we're the customers, you know. And it kind of tricks the customers because at that point, you know, you're promising us this. And then whenever we get this, we're like, it, like, when that, like, whenever, like, it, it, it's like, bro, that's like, that's like, uh, that's like me promising you guys. That's like, that's like me saying, hey, guys, um, if you watch this video, I want to give you guys a box with, uh, with some snacks in it, like with, with some delicious snacks in it. 
and then you guys get the box and you open it and there's and there's nothing in there. Like, no, you're expecting a box with snacks in it. You're not expecting a box with nothing in it. That, that's the same thing with us getting the game, getting trailers, getting gameplay on YouTube, checking it out, uh, seeing uh, what other content creators are, are saying about the game. And then as soon as we get the game, we play the game and this game has a live service on it where, you know, where we have to like, like, like where this is connected to the multiplayer. And then, but then like, you know, in order for you to have this character, you got to buy this and pay for this. And at the end of the day, bro, like gaming's, I, I wouldn't say gaming has always been like this, but it's been like this for some years now. And to be honest with you, um, a lot of those games fail. Um, a lot of them do. Some don't. Some prosper. Um, and, and that's like a very small amount. Some fail. Uh, sorry, not even some. Most of them fail. Most of these, you know, surprise, oh, live service things uh, come up really short and they fail because, you know, we're expecting this big thing and it's been hyped up a thousand times. And as soon as it comes through, all of a sudden, you know, we're duped and we got tricked and we got scammed and then, you know, we got portrayed basically. And now we won't trust that company or, or now we won't trust like we will like we won't trust that company to like drop like another sequel or whatever. So at the end of the day, um, I'm glad that they actually, you know, scrapped that. and was like, you know what? Let's just create a single player game um, because I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Um, and, and call me what you want. But if I'm being real, bro, most single player games are better than multiplayer games anyway. So. Fairly clear cut course of action given that Dragon Age Inquisition is hey, I'm just, hey, overall hey, game of the I'm year just being according real. to multiple I'm outlets, sorry. award shows, uh, and gamers alike. I'm just being real Do with myself. The same thing as last time. Everyone's happy. That's not to say that a Dragon Age live service multiplayer game couldn't work, but it, it, it could. No, no, it could. It could work. But at the same time, though, it's better if it's just the single player because that's what the original fan base loves. And so you give them that. You don't. I'm not saying you can't do nothing different, but you don't, you know, ruin the chemistry that you have with the fan base because you want to make some extra money. No, you give you, especially if it's your loyal fan base, you got to give them what they want. If that makes sense, you know, and, and especially if it's your forte, if it's your forte and that's the reason that they fell in love with it. Why would you not do the same thing? Why would you not improve on the story? Why would you not improve on your forte, improve on your um and, like improve on your way of doing things if people like it a lot you know um and again i'm not saying like like listen if this game dropped the live service whatever a lot of people would like it they would like it but at the same time it would throw them off because because they're, they're like oh like okay like what is this like you know i was expecting this like some people's gonna like it some people's not gonna like it which is okay but you know it is what it is. as far as i'm concerned hell is other people and one of the primary selling points of a good rpg is making friends with lovingly realized fictional characters who may or may not be in the mood for love not just internet randos with sexually suggestive usernames <sighs> Anyway, that's it. We did it. This is probably the busiest month of the year for game releases. I told Next you. month is also a shit show. So again, apologies if we got anything wrong. There's a no, lot you're good. to Don't keep worry about track it. of. If we did miss anything, let us know in the comments. Or just tell us what you're playing this month. Or even better, tell us what you're dressing up as for Halloween. Finally, I'm what am I dressing up for Halloween? So for me, if you guys don't know, obviously you guys know like I, I spend a lot of time making videos and stuff like that. Um, I do take time to celebrate each holiday. Um, that doesn't mean that I don't do no videos that day. Like, no, I still do. Do you know? I still make videos that day. Um, what am I? What am I being for Halloween? Wait, wait. What am I gonna be for Halloween? Hmm. I think I'm passing out candy this year. But I, I, what am I gonna be for Halloween? I don't know. I, I'll ask my sister or whatever. But um, yeah, man. Hopefully you guys uh enjoyed this video. Um, he missed he missed until dawn, which is okay. I'm not gonna go off on him because he missed the game. Who cares? Uh, Until Dawn's coming October 4th. Really excited about that. I think it's like called Until Dawn Remake or Remaster, whatever it one's called. Um, and so, yeah, really excited about that game. Other than that, I, I don't really think he missed anything. I know, obviously, I know you guys probably are like waiting for a game that he didn't call. Um, so, yeah, comment down below, you know, if he missed anything or not. I'm really excited for Silent Hill, uh, Dragon Ball, uh, uh, Sparkling Zero, um, 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 uh, Until Dawn, uh, Dragon Age. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Um, it's going to be a busy month. It's going to be a really, really... Oh, my God. This, uh, 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 um, Super Mario uh, um, Party or whatever. Um, what else? 
Uh, and I think that's about it, bro. This is going to be a really busy month for this YouTube channel. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, if you guys are not here, because be prepared for a lot of videos coming through, especially in October. I told you guys this what, months ago that October is going to be literally the big, like the busiest month like that I've ever had on my channel. Um, multiple upon multiple upon multiple videos will be coming out every single day in October. Um, so make sure you guys get <laughs> get ready for that one. I'm definitely going to get my eight hours of sleep uh, every night because, yeah, bro, a lot of videos, a lot of videos are definitely going to be uh, pumped out. And uh, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel. And other than that, man, see you guys out there.